um, in the Eastern Cape, this type of um, information um, has been forwarded to the police. Um, they are uh, in possession of that. That's the Western Cape um, shooting at our depot, at our premises. Um, that coach was shot at basically 50 meters from my office where I sit in Cape Town. Um, then um, the application in terms of the MEC in the, in the Eastern Cape, Minister of Transport, um, in that order, we were seeking or we are seeking that the MEC and the minister um, have an obligation um, to take positive steps to put in place measures to ensure the safety of long distance uh, bus drivers um, and their passengers, specifically in the Eastern Cape. Um, the embassy and the minister, now this minister is the national minister of transport that we're talking about. So this is the embassy of the Western Cape and the national minister of transport have an obligation to cooperate and coordinate their efforts with the South African police force and not work against what was already agreed and put in place and nullified uh, what was happening on the ground. That the embassy's action to suspend and require intercape to enter into negotiations on inter alia price um, with the taxi operators were in fact in lawful. The MEC and the minister must, in consultation with South African Police Force, develop a comprehensive plan to ensure the safety of long distance bus drivers and passengers in the Eastern Cape. This is an extraction of what we are seeking with the interdict. The status quo at the moment, um, as I say, this tax, the, the tax are still happening. Um, there are empty promises from the national and also the Eastern Cape um, authorities. There are assistance from the police uh, at the moment. Um, and um, there's only arrests that was made in the Western Cape, not in the Eastern Cape. And remember most of these attacks, uh, about 128 of the uh, attacks happened in the Eastern Cape. Um, I'm very worried about that. The, the, because of the fact that there's no coordination on a national uh, level, seeing that these attacks happened in the in 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 Gauteng as well, and as far as I'm concerned, there's no long-term solution at the moment. Um, if there is no national intervention, the, these uh, perpetrators um, will will take the acts to. To, uh, of, of, of terrorism to other provinces as, as, as well. What we have here is that um, this is a bus that was, that was um, bought and services was introduced from the towns that Intercape are not longer uh, allowed to operate from. This individual, Bonki, he's a representative of Carter. He is the one that chaired the meeting in East London prescribing um, how the bus operators should conduct their services out of the Eastern Cape. Since Intercape and other operators are not allowed to operate from the towns I've mentioned earlier, the taxi operators has now taken it upon themselves to buy buses and they are now rendering these services. So you see, this is a clear indication of taxi operators targeting the long distance bus operators or the interprovincial bus operators and systematically driving them out of an area. And they have succeeded that, um, that goal. They succeeded in that goal in the Eastern Cape effectively until now. Intercape reported to the authorities um, uh, um, <clears throat> this incident and uh, also this particular coach was impounded in Cape Town because it had no legal authority to carry passengers. It had a permit on board which allowed this particular bus operator um, that he bought the bus from to do charters in Kuzulu Natal. And the permit also expired. So it was a charter permit of the previous owner that expired um, in 2020. So they impounded the bus on a Saturday. The Sunday night, the attacks resumed in Cape Town by shootings on the Sunday night and also on the Tuesday night. So again, a clear indication that there is a direct link, a direct link uh, between these attacks um, and the um, taxi associations. 
so that concludes the the PowerPoint presentation, and um, I just want to 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 conclude by um, saying this. I'm deeply disappointed in the fact that my letters that were sent to the president of South Africa came back unanswered. The letters that were sent to the minister of transport, Mbalula, the minister of police, Mr. Chele, came back unanswered. I want to request this portfolio committee to take this matter to the National Assembly because this is a matter of national importance. I am deeply concerned that no action or a lack of action on behalf of national government and specifically the Eastern Cape has led to the deterioration of the situation in the public uh, transport sector, specifically the interprovincial uh, bus sector. Both these ministers cannot say that they are not aware of the issue. They are acutely aware of what's going on. Furthermore, Intercape has also written extensively to the Department of Transport about the failure of the Minister of Transport to implement, successfully implement, fully implement the Land Transportation Act. And I also believe the fact that this act was never fully implemented has contributed hugely to the situation that we are facing at the moment. Um, I can address you on, on that subject um, a little bit later or at another um, occasion. The, um, the last thing I wanna say is that um, I'm grateful for this opportunity to address you on this matter. Intercap has just bought um, 40 coaches uh, for the Charter and Tour, Tour Division, which effectively makes Intercape not only the largest intercity, interprovincial operator in Southern Africa, but also the biggest tour operator with the largest fleet of coaches. Now, I don't have to tell you what will happen if a coach gets shot at and overseas tourists gets hurt or injured or even killed in such an incident. Bear in mind that the shooting incidences in Cape Town in, 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 in broad daylight happened about 500 meters from the border of the international airport in, in Cape Town. The shooter was standing on the bridge as you come out of Cape Town, as, as, as you come out of the airport on, on your way to Cape Town City. Um, it was on the bridge at the airport where this incident happened. Um, at five o'clock in the afternoon in broad daylight. It could have been two coaches carrying tourists um, to the city that just arrived in South Africa. Can you imagine how the South African government are gonna explain that to the international community? So this is a matter of national importance. I believe this is a matter that the president should take cognizance of and I, I, I would demand, I would use that word demand, I would demand that this committee and other committees um, bring the two ministers, the Minister of Transport, the Minister of Police, to the Assembly, the National Assembly, and let them answer uh, to these issues. It is high time for government to take this issue and come back with, the, with a solution. If Intercape should not be in business, then they should tell me. But if Intercape has a right in terms of its permits and its good standing as a good citizen in South Africa that's paying taxes and it's law abiding, then it should be protected to render such services. 
But for me to talk to another committee and another radio station and another television station and another newspaper is not going to help. It's not going to save the lives. It is only the action of the president, his two ministers, and the police and the anti-crime units uh, in the South African police force, crime intelligence, that can make arrests and put an end to this extortion, this racketeering, the collusion, the intimidation, the threats. Thank you very much for your time. I'm open for questions. Um, thank you uh, very much um, for your presentation, um, Mr. Ferreira. Uh, honorable members, um, that was uh, uh, the presentation um, with uh, the sensitivity of the matter as presented here. Um, I hope uh, honorable members uh, will assist us also to, to come up with the intervention um, strategies uh, on the matter and uh, the, 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 the pictures, they are so disturbing. Um, I think about uh, uh, the people who were passengers in those buses um, that fell there. It's something else, <laughs> but um, however, um, let me first uh, allow the, the members to deliberate on the, on, the, on the presentation. I see one hand here uh, of a uh, honorable uh, Gomba. Uh, <clears throat> followed by um, uh, Mamukas Kego, uh, Comrade uh, Wing, uh, Honorable Wingler, um, Honorable uh, Makubela, and Honorable Maneli. Um, this um, Honorable Gumbi, I see no hand of yours here. So when you are saying that your hand is up, where is the hand? Because I don't see the hand here. And uh, also, um, Mr. Poltina, uh, can you accept uh, honorable, there's a member here that says that um, he wants to be accepted on the charts. Can you check that? Sorry, Chairperson. Oh. It's Honorable Gumbi. My hand function is not working, which is why I typed in the text that my hand is up, but it's not working. I don't know why it's not available on my platform. Your hand is not available on the platform. Which gadget are you using? I'm using my MacBook, Chairperson. It, it, it happens from time to time. From You must go to reactions, then you will see the, the raising of hand. Meanwhile, but meanwhile, I'll... I'll I will note you, but go to, please go to reactions, then you will find uh, the function there. Then you are going to follow uh, Honorable Maneli. And then um, after Honorable Maneli, um, it will be Honorable April. So in that order, Mamukomba. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. And uh, let me welcome the presentation by the bus company. Uh, Honorable Chair, um, this presentation is a disturbing presentation uh, because I see a very big threat of tourism in, 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 in the Western Cape. And um, Honorable Chair, and the lives of the people also who are passengers, because uh, tourism is not about international, but also from province to province, interprovincial tourism is very important to us. And this is uh, really having a negative impact, uh, these criminal acts. I want to criticize and really uh, say these anarchy actions, uh, 
and criminal action from this uh, association that is uh, fighting the intercape is actually uh, killing us uh, in terms of the tourism growth in, in South Africa. I therefore call uh, Honorable Chair, the Minister for Community Safety, the Minister for um, Transport to really interact with the Western Cape uh, uh, local government uh, or the city of Western Cape to really deal, work together in dealing with this uh, taxi associations which are, 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 are aligned and contracted to the local municipalities or to the city of uh, Cape Town. Because uh, uh, the, the national uh, department um, may want to intervene, but without the assistance of the Western Cape, uh, um, uh, city of Western Cape, um, it will not uh, work out. And also, um, arrest must happen. We cannot leave this anarchy to continue happening and threatening tourism and a, 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 a criminality happening the way it is happening. I criticize it. I really uh, would like to say this not this is not good and it must be stopped with immediate effect. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Gomba. In that order, um, members. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, in the platform, I also greet the representative of the bus company by the name of Intercape. Uh, Chairperson, uh, you, you understand as the presentation that the Eastern Cape is highly affected uh, as most incidents are mentioned. They are happening in the Eastern Cape. Uh, it's good and I appreciate that uh, we have invited uh, these two transport authorities, though Santaco is not here, but Indacape is here. Uh, I just want to bring to the attention of the committee also that uh, there's been a lot of deaths in the Eden Cape uh, as a result of this protest and also those that happen in the Eastern Cape. Those drivers that are killed there and those people that are affected there come from the Eastern Cape. Uh, that's why I'm saying Eastern Cape is highly affected. I wanted to ask Chairperson, the presenter, if their company belongs to any association, but I get it during the presentation that they have pulled out of the association. He is mentioning some reasons to pull out, but if he is able to disclose some of the reasons, if possible, uh, I may be glad just for us to have the other side of the story so that we are able to do our own assignment as the committee. Uh, Chairperson, I once witnessed a, an incident in Dujwa because those buses are operating also in, in my area. There was once a standstill of the N2. There was a community protest and nothing was happening there transport industry downed tools and that affected the end to the town and the end to where at standstill. Uh, all the stakeholders in the town uh, met under one roof in the presence of the MEC of transport. I want to check if their representative as 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 Intercape was there in that meeting. If yes, what were the resolutions? Because the, the stakeholders were there uh, and the taxi associations that are operating in the areas were there. If no, uh, what plans do they have? Because this problem is affecting everyone in the Eastern Cape. You'll remember, Chair, our interest as tourism is a safe transport for commuters, is a 
transport that is on time and reliable, and also uh, those affordable and low cost prices. We are also interested in that. That uh, because as a committee we have a mandate of promoting domestic tourism. So if there are any associations or uh, companies that can pro that can produce affordable prices, low cost prices, that is our interest. We encourage them to do that. The question that I also want to ask is about the issue of uh, subsidy. If the company is subsidized by government, uh, I understand, Chair, that uh, transport is a business. Business it has got a competition and monopoly. There's also monopoly. Uh, as I hear from him that the ones that may be involved in the protest are some are now buying buses and operating in the areas where they are affected. I wanted to ask if they are subsidized as a company. I want to ask uh, 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 another question because he's saying in the area of Amtata, Mtata, they are operating with less incident, less or no incident. What is it that they are doing right around Mtata? That is not happening in the route that passes Butterworth, Dujua, and, and, and the Kai right to Queenstown and, and other areas, if we may get that. Chair, I, I, I would advise that uh, the, the company in the Eastern Cape, they must also, if they are not getting cooperation, as they are mentioning in their presentation here, that they are not getting assistance from the MEC, they must also conduct the premier of the of the Eastern Cape so that if there is no cooperation there, at least the head of the but I mean get the head of governance in the Eastern Cape may do otherwise. There are issues that I want to raise also, Chair, that uh, we understand that safety is the mandate of SAPS, transport is the mandate of uh, the Department of Transport, but we must not leave out society because safety is also a societal matter. We must bring in society. So other stakeholders are also important in the matter. Where they are saying they are not getting responses from the president, I don't think the president uh, may uh, respond directly to them, but I don't think nothing is happening. I think the president may conduct the the the, the, the head of uh, transport and other people that are, are, are have a mandate to, to 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 take care of the safety of communities and the buses themselves. An advice to the company is that. They must not isolate themselves. Uh, I think if the reasons are not that much threatening to them, they are pulling out of the associations. They may rethink of going back and joining those associations. Uh, that's just an advice. They are free to take or not to take, but it's good when you work uh, within an association because as a committee, sometimes we, we are interested in the things that cut across whatever. That's why Santaco was brought to the to, 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 to this committee because it's an umbrella body of some uh, taxi associations. Uh, but as a committee, we will continue to, even before bringing, if we are going to, bringing the matter uh, in front of parliament to be discussed, we may uh, continue uh, conducting other relevant and uh, responsible departments as we normally do when something involves tourism. Chairperson, I think uh, what has been presented in front of us is a crisis uh, in the uh, transport industry. 
highly affected the people of the Eastern Cape, and there are risks, Chairperson, because people are dying. And uh, tourists, may, more tourists, tourists are affected during these protests because sometimes there's shutdown, there's no movement. So our mandate is the committee is affected. I wanted to bring those points, Chair. I may come back. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Mamukrego. Honorable Makubela. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Greetings, uh, Honorable Members, uh, uh, Chairperson, and also to the representative of uh, InterCAPE. Well, <clears throat> I want to com start my comment by mentioning the fact that every life is important, even the lives of South Africans or the lives of international tourists. As we are nav navigating this uh, issue, trying to find solutions to this uh, pandemic that has uh, engulfed this uh, transportation sector, we need to put every life important. Uh, and we need not lose any life further than this. Hence the, the, hence the situation needs to be uh, arrested uh, very soon. Ours as a portfolio committee, our mandate is on tourism, but tourism, we know that it's a sector that relies on other sectors for it to be able to flourish, for it to be able to be functional. We rely on a uh, road infrastructure, we rely on transportation to uh, transport and ferry tourists to the various destinations that they may be, be visiting, be it international or domestic tourists. Hence, we are uh, concerned about these violent uh, attacks uh, within the transportation sector. That is the reason we have uh, convened this meeting and uh, wanting to listen to the stakeholders within uh, this sector, this transport sector, on what are, what are the problems, what are the challenges, listening to them. We've, we've, we've listened to the presentation from uh, the representative from InterCAPE. It will be important, Chairperson, uh, uh, that we also, from this meeting, try to solicit an audience uh, or an in the engagement with the portfolio committee of the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape, so that we try to get a synergy and we do not work in silos in trying to assist uh, these uh, uh, stakeholders who are in this space, who are now frustrated. Because from what I hear from this gentleman, he has just echoed his frustrations uh, that uh, he is, be they are knocking in every door and they are not uh, getting joy or assistance. Uh, uh, given the complexity of uh, the challenges that involves uh, uh, safety and security, that involves also uh, the transport department. However, since we are also coming into the space uh, as those that are custodians of the tourist uh, part, we are also now trying to put our heads and trying to arrest and assist the situation. I will also want to encourage uh, the gentlemen uh, not to pull out from these engagements and these uh, uh, associations, because as we are engaging with the, with the stakeholders, we are going to want to find them organized. We are going to want to find them under the same roof and starting and beginning to engage and talk to each other. Uh, and I want to just uh, comment and say, this is not the, the end of our engagement. 
the portfolio committee is a proposing or according to our program in the near future we will be having a colloquium where we'll be having the transport sector the uh, uh, safety and security uh, police uh, sector we'll also be having tourist tourism uh, stakeholders who are going to be together on the round table and also deliberating on these uh, challenges and this uh, pandemic. I want to call it a pandemic because clearly where the lives of ordinary citizens are put at risk, it is a violent and it, is, it should be classified as, as a pandemic that we should be arresting and putting all our efforts to ensure that no life further than the lives that we have lost are lost in the process. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Makubela. Honorable Winkler. Good morning, and thank you, Chair, and um, thank you to the gentleman from Intercape. Um, what I've heard this morning is highly chilling. Um, and although this falls under the purview of the Department of Transport, um, I do believe that it has a cross cutting implications, especially when we speak of the um, impact it could have on tourism. As you say, if there were some international tourists that were caught, for instance, in crossfire, um, this could have a very lasting indelible impact on the tourism um, brand in our country. And we already know that it's plagued by incidents of, uh, of violent crime. Um, so I think just to echo some of the similar sentiments expressed by my colleagues on this portfolio is that we really need to have engagement with um, all the necessary stakeholders. And it is quite a, a pity that Santaco representative isn't on this platform today, but to maybe then facilitate a discussion um, with the portfolio committee on transport as well as on policing. And then as um, I think my one colleague said, maybe in terms of COCTA engage with our provincial counterparts in provinces where um, this issue has escalated. Um, but I do also want to say that this is this issue is actually becoming, uh, I think, more and more prevalent and um, more of a crisis. In my constituency, I was recently approached by um, some transport operators who, again, uh, there seems to be a lot of fighting over routes. I think that what's happened with the pandemic is that people are, are really desperate to eke out a living and, and are looking at any avenue or route to do so. And it's obviously causing a, a lot of friction in communities. Um, and so we must find a, a lasting and amicable solution um, that, that looks at diplomacy and sitting down and talking about this um, before things escalate into worst sort of violent or worse violent incidences. And that it has been happening and what I've been seeing. So yes, um, I fully advocate this uh, cross-cutting and departmental engagement and also um, across the spheres of government and for us to convene a, a, some sort of forum as soon as possible so that we can arrest um, the violent incidents that are yeah, transpiring. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Winkler. Honorable Manelli. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to members and also to the representation from the Inter Cape. Uh, Chairperson, I think I can't emphasize more on the mandate of the committee in relation to this uh, man made uh, pandemic. I believe that it's man made because really a human element is involved in this one. Uh, it, it would have been more fruitful, Chairperson, if we had uh, Santaco today. In noting its apology, Chairperson, I, I believe that at some point we will have to engage them as well because we need to to have a, a biased feeling on 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 the matters that um, that are affecting the tourism, especially in relation to the transport sector of of tourism. Chairperson, I must say, as other members indicated, I'm also so dismayed by the violence that, we, that is being experienced by innocent citizens that are only desperate for transportation. Because most people that are affected they are those people that rely on transport for whatever business that they may engage in. 
on daily people on daily basis people commute and uh, we, we we can't just downplay that in every situation they need to be protected they need to feel safe as commuters so now they're being exposed to violence that has got nothing to do with them uh Chairperson, i think as this portfolio committee as honorable Ma Makubela has said that we need to engage the portfolio committees of the two provinces, especially the Eastern Cape, because these matters are more prevalent in the Eastern Cape. We can't operate in isolation, Chair. These are cross-cutting uh, matters that needs uh, proper engagement. So as the committee, the sooner we, we get to engage with the other stakeholders, then the better and probably we'll have a a lasting solution to these matters. But Kesha, in terms of my question to, to, the, to, the, to the CEO or the gentleman is that, does he believe that um, the attacks on Intercape uh, are being exacerbated after he has pulled out on the association or what? Is there now a specific target on, on Intercape bus line? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Manelli. Honorable Gumbi. Thank you uh, very much, um, Chairperson. So, I mean, Chairperson, this is a bit of a difficult one because I think as a portfolio committee, our role is to, is to basically protect and promote tourism. And so this has an effect on, on domestic tourism. Um, it has a significant effect, in fact. But a large part of this is is all criminal conduct. This is this is it's it's crime. When I mean, businesses businesses obviously have a right to operate as long as they're operating within the bounds of the law, they're not breaking any law. They must be able to do so and do so freely and enjoy protection from 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 the state and the government. And so I think that the question then should be what 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 how does our portfolio committee intervene and what can be done immediately. And the reason why I say immediately is because it, I agree with uh, uh, what other colleagues have said that it is actually an emergency situation. And so I think that the first thing, uh, uh, I think we must accede to one of the requests which was made is that we need to put our own pressure on, on transport police and even intelligence uh, um, um, to be able to make this a kind of a top priority. And so I think as a portfolio committee of tourism, we should write officially to those uh, 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 portfolio committees that we have we, we received a presentation. It is concerning, especially for tourism. But however, a lot of the matters do fall within their realm, and that they should be able to deal with it. And if we can do that formally as a portfolio committee, you know, uh, um, we're able to assist the situation to 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 make it a greater priority. I think we should also, uh, uh, um, as a portfolio, write as well to the ministers of those. Uh, departments as well as the president, because I think that when 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 you've got an emergency situation, and 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 some of the role players are writing to 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 those representatives and they're not responding, I think that it's upon us to be able to take that forward as well. Um, and 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 what is really really also uh, uh, um, obviously concerning, uh, and, and why it's important that we do that so that it can be addressed is that. We don't want a situation, and, uh, and one of the honorable members uh, uh, spoke about it here, saying that all lives in essence uh, um, should be protected and are very, very important. But we don't want a situation whereby at the moment you're having many people who are taking buses, uh, 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 many people who are from working class families who, who are dependent on this transport. There's so much violence and people's lives are being taken and it doesn't get taken seriously, then what you have is a situation where a bus of tourists from wherever they might be, from France or whatnot, who get um, shot and, 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 and some tourists die, and then only there is action and it's taken seriously. It can't be obviously that, you know, we, we, we in essence uh, uh, value some, some lives or some groups more importantly, and, and that's how it's going to come about. So if in my suggestion as a portfolio committee, if we can take those two steps, at least we begin to help uh, um, the process forward in the most immediate way. And then we can carry on with the other steps in terms of the long-term solutions. But I do think that it's very, very important that we, we take some kind of action now. 
Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Gumbi. Honorable April. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and greetings to all the members of the Portfolio Committee. I would like to welcome the presentation. It is shocking, disheartening, displeasing, and absolutely disgusting to see some of the images that we have seen and the report that comes from what has happened. I have been enlarged, covered by many of the colleagues who have spoken before. You know, Chairperson, I am myself an Intercape client who from time to time take my family on a bus and um, it could have, I could have been on one of those buses that were shot at. So I take this thing in a very, very serious light. But we should not forget that there is a lot of monopoly and bullying that is happening in the sector. Um, and this uh, inequality is one of the driving forces, except for the the the, the criminality, we will have to look at systems that we put in place to make sure that these kind of uh, bullying from the taxi operators and the monopoly that has been run by the bus operators, we should look into how we can make the playing field equal with that regard. Chairperson, there's something that the presenter mentioned that is not sitting well with me. Um, the first thing is the, 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 the demand um, the, co the collusion and the corruption that is mentioned by the presenter. Now, you know, um, these are strong words and when it comes into the portfolio committee and it's mentioned and it's not uh, addressed or we don't request that, you know, wherever corruption rears its ugly head and collusion and these kind of things, and someone makes mention of something like that, it's a matter of concern for me that has to be taken up with the police and I would then want the, to request from the CEO of, of Intercape to, to go and lay charges so that there can be investigations that is going on. Because when there is corruption and uh, money is exchanging hands illegally, there is things that is not necessarily for this com uh, portfolio committee, but it's a police matter. It is a matter that could be investigated by the Hawks and so on. And that is something that I take in a very serious light and would want to not say that uh, the CEO must tell us now here yeah, because we are not police and investigators, but he should really go think about opening cases so that he may have references and that our police, we deal with the corrupt elements that is within the system. I thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. I have concluded. Um, thank you, Honorable April. I'm going to give uh, Mr. Ferreira uh, the platform now to respond to the questions um, which were raised by Honorable Members. Thank you, Mr. Ferreira. The platform is yours. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Members. Um, <clears throat> I would just like to say that um, I welcome all the comments and um, suggestions made by everyone. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, I take heart uh, of everything that was said here today. Allow me to respond uh, by saying this. <clears throat> everything that was said, um, I can back up in terms of a affidavit which was already filed with the NAT joints under Brigadier uh, Carlitz. It was also filed uh, at the Western Cape uh, and it's now also in possession of the um, bilateral meeting uh, between the Western Cape and the, and, the, and the Eastern Cape. So they have all the evidence, they have my affidavit, um, and it's been reported to the authorities. Um, insofar as <clears throat> the uh, associations um, that we don't belong to, um, let me just explain to you that there, there, there is no long distance bus association. Um, uh, we tried to form one uh, to try and be a, a united front against these bus attacks. Um, and I decided at a point in time to, um, to not um, continue with, with the um, membership of Intercape. Reason being that Intercape has decided not to negotiate with the taxis not to agree on price, not to agree to their demands, not to hand over the 
keys of the company to the taxi associations effectively, where they would be running this company. Um, the other bus operators out of, I guess, fear, I can't speak on their, on their behalf, best is you, you, you talk to them. I'm happy to give you their names. Um, that was also affected. At, um, and they decided they decided to go to go and talk to the taxis. I pleaded with them. I pleaded with them uh, on on more than one occasion to come to the police, to make a case, to explain how we're being extorted as as bus operators. And they chose not to. Um, I have taken a decision uh, to file an affidavit. I've also taken a decision to report it to various uh, law enforcement agencies. And it's now up to these national and local law enforcement agencies to act upon the 150 cases of violent acts and murder and extortion. And it's out of my hands. You know, I can only take it so far. As far as the, um, the, the meeting um, of the taxis uh, in Idicho is concerned, that happened, that incident happened on the 27th of, um, of May. And it was the taxi associations that protested against the presence of the bus companies, in particular Intercape in Idicho. And yes, they blocked the N2 for a whole day. And yes, the MEC of transport came and sat down with the taxis. And it is after that meeting that I was phoned and, 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 and told that um, I should not be operating out of Kofenwaba, Dutra, Butterworth, Norbo, and Somo. So, I mean, um, Intercape has been um, in existence for 36 years. When permits were first granted in 1986, Intercape got granted one permit. One permit to operate between Cape Town and Port Elizabeth. Intercape is a private company. And at the time, Greyhound, which belonged to SAF Marine, and Translock City to City, which belonged to government, Transnet, or to PAX, got granted networks. Networks, in other words, they could travel throughout South Africa. Um, Greyhound subsequently changed hands in terms of ownership. It went to Tollgate, it went bankrupt, then bought by Unitrans, which uh, was wholly owned at some point in time, or, you know, uh, majority shares holding Cup, and Cup was uh, a, a, a company owned by uh, Steinoff, which was in the press lately. Now we all know what happened to Steinoff, and um, subsequently to the uh, the pandemic, uh, grounds been um, liquidated. The assets has been, and these are now run bus operating in South Africa. Um, auto packs um, has, been, has been run into the ground as far as I'm concerned. They inherited uh, 705, I think it's six, 570 coaches uh, with the World Cup in 2010. And those coaches are still, some of those coaches are still running. Translux are operating one or two departures out of Cape Town. My problem is there's, there's this thing about bus companies and monopolies. Intercape is a private company. It has never received any subsidization from the state where we have competed for and still competing against government, highly subsidized auto packs through Prasa, through Transnet. So I want to stress by saying, if an entrepreneur in South Africa that has built a business over 36 years, that has run an effective service without breaking the laws of this country, running a business within the parameters of the permits. Why should this company be made out to be a dominant operator if it does its and it conducts its business in a lawful way and in a better way at a very competitive price to the passengers so i just want to make that point very clear never receive subsidized subs subsidies from the state it has outperformed a 
parastatal, highly subsidized by the state. It is outperformed a public company and it has succeeded through COVID where other companies has fallen by the wayside to come out the other end just to be terrorized by an industry that has effectively got nothing to do with long distance bus operations. And I must just say that a taxi was never designed to do long distance. That's why so many people are being killed by taxis. There's no sleeping compartment for the driver. It uses the same tires as a normal car, it uses the same brake system as a normal car. It was never designed to run 300 or 250,000 kilometers a year. So, so what the long distance taxi associations and the taxi operators do, they're using vehicles which is never designed for the work that they are doing with it. Where coaches are international standard coaches, it is designed by Germany and Sweden and, and, and all over the world. And it is the best coaches and the safest coaches that money can buy. A coach will cost you today seven to eight million rand. So this is the type of investment we're talking about. So in short, there was many, many uh, suggestions made. And I can summarize in saying this, that Intercape is a law-abiding citizen. It pays the taxes. We're not breaking any laws. We've been operating for 36 years. It is not a subsidized company. It is not a company that will participate in collusion, racketeering, extortion, paying, paying bribes. It is a company that is based on godly principles. And it is a company that is proclaiming the word of God on all the coaches throughout South Africa, because we believe it's our purpose. And that's what we're here, here for, to build God's kingdom on earth. I invite the Department of Transport to tell me what we have done wrong in terms of the way we conducted our business throughout the 36 years. All our coaches got permits. All our drivers has got uh, public driving permits and licenses. All the coaches' licenses are fully paid. All our taxes paid. All the fine fees are paid. And I think the cape should be protected and allowed to operate its services as any other business should be allowed to conduct their business and also be protected by the South African police force. I have extensively addressed the, the bilateral meeting in East London, reminding the police about Section 204 in terms of their responsibility towards the public um, of the Republic of the people of the Republic of South Africa. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, um, Mr. Ferreira. I see the two hands. Are they legacy hands, those hands? Honorable members. Mine is not legacy, Chair. I go. Okay, continue. Yes, Chair. Uh, thank you for the responses from the representative of uh, the, the, the bus company by the name of Eastern Cape. I, ju I, I just... I, I forgot to, 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 to bring to the attention of uh, the bus company that in the Eastern Cape, there's new leadership in the Department of Transport uh, and Safety. Uh, you see how the those two departments are structured. Uh, maybe good for the crisis that we get from the present that is in front of us because transport is, uh, is 
also with safety and liaison in the Eastern Cape. So he, they must be ready to update the new MEC on the, on the crisis that they are experiencing. Uh, because uh, as I am a, a social uh, media person, I observe the trends there that the people, the commuters like their services. Mm -hmm. What they are afraid of are the risks associated now. So I think they must be able to update the new uh, leadership of the department. And I appreciate what you other uh, members of the portfolio committee have mentioned some suggesting that we may, as a committee, even meet our counterparts just to get closer to the crisis. And also uh, wanting to highlight that this is also an intelligence matter. You know what is associated with the industry. There are risks, there's whatever. So it's also an intelligence matter. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I just wanted to bring that those facts. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, honorable uh, members. And also uh, thank um, Mr. Ferreira for availing himself and uh, present uh, to the portfolio committee on this uh, particular um, incident um, which many of us uh, were not, or some of us um, were not uh, aware uh, about. And uh, I want to uh, also say um, we will, um, as a portfolio committee, take the matter up. Um, honorable members have also raised um, um, the 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 reality of a cut a crossing and um, the responsibilities um, for our portfolio committee then um it will mean uh, that um, at the level of parliament uh, we will initiate a meeting um between a uh, transport and um, portfolio committee uh, on police so that um, we are able uh, to deliberate on the matter, uh, hoping that when we invite you next time to come and present uh, to these uh, portfolios, um, you will avail yourself and we will also rope in the NCOP, um, which is the National Council of Provinces, uh, in that uh, particular meeting so that whatever decisions uh, that are taken uh, we move in unison and uh, you know implement what it uh, needs to be implemented as a collective in ensuring um, that um, we we assist uh, the company uh, because to us um, the safety of uh, the south african people um, is very important um, when they want to visit other provinces um, with a bus, it, it's very it's very important. And um, this time around, um, there is a demand on on the buses because the flights have become very expensive uh, in the recent times. So the demand on the buses has um, has returned. And um, you, we, we are taking this responsibility because what we have presented uh, to the portfolio committee also will reflect bad uh, on the international uh, community um, that uh, wants to visit uh, our country. And uh, we, we, we are now uh, bound to also take responsibility to say, uh, these are the measures that we are going to to follow uh, in mitigating um, what has happened, um, uh, particularly uh, in the Eastern Cape. 
perhaps uh, in that meeting we will also um, have um, the progress report on the incidents and the number plates that are visible uh, of cars that committed crimes and, and what have you. It is um, clear that uh, these were acts of criminality as honorable members have said. So the law uh, must take its course. Um, I don't want to say it's a pity that Santaco is not here. I want to say now I understand why on the last minute Sandako decided to pull out of um, this platform because it was also an opportune time for them uh, to come here with the intercape and present um, their challenges, uh, all of them. So perhaps they anticipated that intercape will raise many issues. And uh, the what you so call uh, allegations um, labeled uh, against uh, their people. So uh, Mr. Ferreira, in, in short, we have noted uh, everything that you have uh, shared with the portfolio committee. Um, we are, it is a process and um, this term is a term which is uh, so intense uh, in terms of the work uh, of parliament and the schedules um, of the portfolio committees, but we will ensure that um, before the end of this term, uh, we, we meet with the portfolio committees and then bring you along uh, so that you also uh, present to them. And um, yeah, um, Mamukrego is privileged because uh, she is an honorable member from the Eastern Cape originally. And uh, she is uh, more clued up about the incidences uh, which you were raising on your on your on your presentation. So um, also that um, the information that she has uh, beyond the one that you have shared with us, uh, perhaps uh, in that meeting of us as members of parliament, uh, it will be shared. So without wasting more of your time, um, I'm going to again um, thank you and that we appreciate the fact that uh, you came to us and presented uh, the, the report as disturbing as it was. Um, I think it is good that you did not edit anything so that we understand um, the magnitude um, of um, what this uh, has caused, not only to intercape, but to society at large and uh, people who uh, are your clients. And, 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 and so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ferreira, uh, for you. coming here, uh, hoping that uh, Petra, uh, from the office of the DG also has noted uh, all that was presented and will share and report back to the DG of tourism uh, on all that has been presented here and what we are going to do as the portfolio committee in terms of the follow-up on the matter. And uh, I want also to um, address uh, this thing. It would be remiss of me if I don't uh, respond to that um, the president is doing nothing or the president has done nothing. The president has appointed ministers and uh, it is those ministers uh, that should be liaising with, with, with the stakeholders. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, especially when there's a crisis of this magnitude that has arisen. So um, both uh, the, the, the transport and um, 
police uh, ministers uh, are the ones that were supposed to be interacting with you as a company and uh, report back uh, to the president because um, it will be difficult for the president to respond uh, to these uh, matters because if your response to Intercape, you must respond to um, Carter, Codeta, and all these other um, organizations out there, uh, even those that are outside what we are deliberating on now. Uh, but because there are those people who are supposed to be a conveyor belt between society and the president, the president won't be able to respond to matters when he has no information, it's even worse. So, um, so that's, that's, that's uh, what we, we need to understand uh, in terms of the responsibilities of the president and uh, uh, the, 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 the crisis that arises out there. The first point of reference it's the ministers. So we hear and we take that uh, you never got any response or intervention from them. Now we are saying as portfolio committee, we are going to intervene and in ensuring uh, that at least there's answers uh, on all these incidences because they are, they've got a um, negative bearing uh, on both a domestic a tourism and uh, those uh, people uh, that um, visits our country. And it's going to be that time of the year very soon uh, of receiving uh, international tourists and what have you. And some of them will need your services. So with this uh, uh, incident that impacts badly um, on our name as a country, we got to ensure that we intervene. So on that note, um, Mr. Ferreira, um, we have come to an end of our meeting and thank you very much for availing um, yourself and giving us such information which we knew nothing about. So if there's nothing else, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank Long you very much, Honorable Chair. Long live the chair. Thank you, Honorable Brev.
Recording stopped.